Hey, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with me, Peter Bogosian. I am delighted to have my friend Dave Silverman on the show. Uh, uh, David Silverman has been an atheist activist for 25 years, serving as both president of American Atheist and executive director of Atheist Alliance International. During his tenures, he brought national attention to the movement via war on Xmas bull uh, <laughs> billboards <laughs> and appearances on Fox News, CNN, and many others. Silverman created the Reason Rally in 2012, the largest atheist gathering in history, and was the 2017 recipient of the Richard Dawkins Award. His book, Fighting God, which is excellent, I read it, uh, An Atheist Manifesto for a Religious World, was rated, quote, the best atheist book of the year. By someone I will not mention. After being oh. canceled in <laughs> <laughs> that's the fun part, though. <laughs> After being canceled in 2018, Silverman left progressivism and feminism, but still clings to his Enlightenment values. His video uh, channel is Firebrand for Good, and he speaks on data, truth, and humanism. Welcome, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Peter. So so good to be on the show again, or oh, talking to you, man. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it. We, we've mm. known each other for a very long time, and uh, uh, we've never had a harsh word with each other. No. No, I don't think we have. I've taken a lot of advice from you, too. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. And um, so I want to talk about, Gav, can you pull up or read, can you pull up a Dave's tw Twitter bio? I follow Dave on Twitter. We follow each other on Twitter. A lot of mutual friends. I want to start by talking to you about this. David Silverman. Uh, Mr. Atheist Pants, if you want to uh, follow. The bio, the description is X left, X woke, but still left of center. Firebrand atheist activist and author and advisory board of Atheist for Liberty, of which I'm on the board of that as well. Healthcare broker. Okay, so let's go with X left, X woke. Let's talk about that. So what do you... All right. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, talk to it. me. You, you, you were woke. I was woke, man. I was right in. I was right inside it. When I was running American Atheists, I was woke and proudly so, emphatically so. Um, I had my inner doubts, but um, and I and I held back on certain things. I always held uh, back on their. Uh, I always held back on my support, or I maintained my support uh, for ex-Muslims and for to a, to an extent freedom of speech but man i was woke and i was in there and i remember a good example is um you know when when johnny when we were doing uh, reason rally 2 2016 mm -hmm. johnny mm -hmm. depp was coming and he um had that whole thing with amber heard come out and i believed the woman i believed all women and i was in charge of the roster i took him off the roster you know we canceled him and i feel terrible about that i publicly apologized for him since then but um i was so deep in it and then, um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So go ahead. I, I just want to linger on this. So when you yeah. say you were deep in it, like when you participate or when you were a believer in that ideology, what kind of stuff did you believe? Like you gave us an example of believe all women, which is truly insane when you think about believing half the population. And we know right. that like Tawana Brawley, when I was we know that, okay. What other kinds of things did you believe? Oh, I what believed it was really, it was really, really important to have, you know, a certain number of black people, a certain number of gay people, a certain number of women on the roster of any event that I put together. Um, there were, there were unfortunately a lot of, of white guys that I looked over and pushed aside um, because of their sex and color. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I look back on those decisions with disdain because that's me engaging in racism and sexism. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not happy with the way I behaved when I was like that. You know, I, I think, uh, well, I know it was Hitchens who said it takes, it takes for, for good people to good people can do good things and for bad people to bad people to do bad things, but for good people to do bad things, it takes religion. And this is what I was doing. I was doing bad things in the name of what I now see as was my religion at the time, which was, was this, this idea that, um, that we needed to compensate for the inequities of the world that we needed to fix. Um, and that people who were um, oppressed needed a leg up. Sometimes that was true. Okay. Sometimes that was true. I want to say that, you know, um, when I did reason rally one, I comped the, the uh, black non-believers and uh, Hispanic American free thinkers and black atheists of America. I comped them admission to uh, the reason rally 
because of their uh, minority status. And that was a good decision, right? That wasn't charity. That was marketing. That was a good decision. Um, but later on, it became charity. It became, you know, we have to help these poor people. And then when those poor people blew up at me, well, I'm sure we, we'll, we'll talk about that. But then I had the red pill shoved up my my ass. You can swear. You can just be yourself. <laughs> yeah, you, can you, say anything, you can say anything you want. So you participated in the ideology. You were yeah. a kind of a in an ideology in which, yeah, you were a, a leader in the in the movement and an ideology which does not carry cards. You were like a card carrying member of you know, pe people change the words, but I don't I, I don't like to give primacy to the definitions others have created. Uh, woke, you were woke. So you what you said you started having doubts. W was there a moment that that made you snap and realize that you were participating in a delusion or what, 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 what happened? Well, um, I was falsely me too. Um, those people who, you know, we were believing all women and two of those women lied and I was, I lost my job. I went down in flames and, uh, I said, I had a red pill shoved up my ass right then. And that's what had happened. You know, when, mm -hmm. when, when, when believe all women became holy shit, these women are lying about me. Um, that was a big part of what I went through. And um, it, it was this, this cascade of, you know, how much has been wrong, how much I've been wrong. And it's, it's, it's a never ending cascade. I have a never ending like uh, um, review of regrets, regretful actions that I've taken um, mm. over the course of years mm. uh, that I regret because I was in this cult. Um, can you but, give I us mean, just three? Like, what what are three things you, you you regret? Like you told us about, you, you're regretting. Oh, I regret yeah. turning away white men who deserve to be on the stage. Uh, I regret um, believing all women and canceling Johnny Depp from our stage. Mm -hmm. I also regret basically yielding to the group in um, yielding to the group, but I was a part of it at the same time. Uh, in Reason Rally 2 and having a very, very woke, very, very uh, social justice-y um, yeah. uh, point. Uh, 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 event. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, event, sure, sure. I'm looking for a different word, but that event will, will be fine. Um, we had some words uh, at Reason Rally 2 about the wokeness, and I was on the anti side, but I was still pro. You know, I was a moderate, but still pretty extreme. So, so your red pill, the, the moment that you, you realized, oh, oh my God, what, oh my God, it's a funny expression to use for the two of us, but uh, <laughs> the, the, the moment that you realized, holy shit, uh, the, the things that I believe are false. Like I have been, I've been behaving in horrific ways. I, I've been believing things that are false the that awareness came because you were me too be, yes be, 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 because you were falsely accused and you were you were found innocent of that and i i but fired anyways yeah f fired anyway right In, fired innocent it. but lost everything anyways right that that's how it goes uh canceled universally canceled i mean you built that organization i mean you were basically that organization there was a, a yeah it was a synonym. Um, and you, you I, I don't want to get too, too personal unless you feel comfortable with that. But then as a consequence of that, you had some personal hardships. Well, yeah, um, I lost everything because of those false allegations. And, um, you know, personally, I'm also very externally motivated. Um, and so when everybody went from loving me to hating me, Mm. Uh, it really, it, 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 it crippled me. Okay. Um, uh, I went, I lost my wife. I lost my kid cause she's, cause they're woke. Um, and are they I lost still woke up. They're still, they still woke. Okay. Okay. They're still woke. I'm still yeah. Hitler. Yeah. Okay. Well, believe it's me, crazy. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. So you, so you, you, you lost your wife, you lost your job, you lost a source of income. You're, do you, again, I don't want to get too personal if you're not comfortable. Do your kids still talk to you now? Or do they still look at you as Hitler? Uh, I'm, I'm still Hitler. I'm still Hitler. Uh, and, and it's not because of the divorce or, or the cheating. It's because I'm not woke. 
and, and you know that's it, it's it's so disturbing because you know i love my kid obviously yeah but yeah um but i lost yeah. everything and that's when yeah. i was really you know I, I i went so far low and that's when i got to really um well first of all get into therapy and start really thinking about where i was and what i thought was true and what i thought was real and i had some friends uh andrew being one of them who helped me see through some of these lights yeah, and help he's a great guy through this yeah he's a good yeah. guy um and yeah it was it, it it took well actually it it took socratic discussion between me and andrew and you know other friends along the lines of manual for creating atheists that actually brought me along and 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 kind of unfogged my mind you know i was doing something which i knew was wrong okay yeah. i knew it was wrong to take white guys off the schedule so that somebody who would draw less people and say less things, but would still click a box could take the stage instead. Yeah. If you oh. think that's wrong, wait until you see who starts flying our planes and doing our surgeries where we start well, getting now, less qualified. And, and so people. now the entire now. Yeah. So now what is going to happen to this country? Okay. We are losing, we've lost knowledge. We've lost it's an assault on system. the meritocracy. It's an yeah, assault it, on the meritocracy. The, the the American way is going away. It's okay, really, so really let's, suffering. Let, let's get back to a uh, couple of things that you said. I, I found it interesting that you said that your your kid, it, 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 about your kids woke, you're Hitler, <clears throat> and if you were only woke, that would be a kind of blood of Christ, the, the, the redemption that would be a kind of Catholic communion wafer. That would be a kind of uh, going through Marxist ideological training or a Catholic catechism. Or um, if you were only woke, that would wash away some of your sins. Right. But, right. But you're, you, you're not. And the relationship is, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but to say the least strained. Yep. So let me ask you a question. So the people did you realize who your true friends and who all the people you thought were your friends, they went crazy on you, like truly crazy. And I yeah. saw it. I saw it like people you thought were your friends and quote unquote allies and people you thought you trusted people you thought loved you and you love them. And t t the tell me about of American, the board of directors of American atheists were all my friends. Okay, well, you, and thought, voted, you thought they were your friends. I thought they were my friends. Yeah. And then they voted unanimously to fire me without due process, going right. against American atheist written policy, which I wrote. It, it's and, and that was just the beginning. I mean, I lost and, and it wasn't just that I lost friends. It was, you know, just really bitter separations. I saw what you did. Fuck you. You're never coming back. You know, and, you know, these are people who, you know, at the very least, I liked, but I mean, at the very worst, it was serious betrayal. Betrayal is a good word. Yeah, okay. there was serious betrayal. I mean, so I, me, I lost my best friend. I lost my best oh. friend. Oh, dude, because, I'm so sorry. Yeah, because so I hit sorry. the woke too much. Yeah, and and thank you, and I appreciate that. But you know what I did find? I did. Mm. I mean, I, I will. It, it's it's kind of Disney, but I did find a better quality of friendship. Totally. Everybody okay. says that. Brett says that. <laughs> I've experienced that. Everybody says that. Literally yeah. everybody. So, you said before, you said before, I'll, before I interrupt you, you said yeah. before that you and I have never had a cross word. Never. But, but if we did, we'd be fine. Correct. Okay? And, and it wouldn't be me going off saying, Peter said something. I disagree. Now he's Hitler. That wouldn't be a thing. <laughs> Right. Well, I mean, we've we've disagreed, but absurd. we've never had a we've never had a harsh word, right? And so right. I'm I, I'm experiencing something with that now, but someone I thought was my friend who's done not nice things to me. Um, oh, but I'm but sorry. anyway, I, I I yeah, I know it's hard. But and okay, they, so, and, and they think that that's okay to do, and that's the other thing. And I know they think it makes them better that. people. If they, it makes them better people, it's justified. Okay, uh, it, it, lying uh, for to serve an end is is a that's moral what, thing to do. Right. The ideology. That's what the ideology. It taints. It corrupts. It poisons. It skews your sense of morality. So, two. I have two questions for you in this <clears throat> process. Did you offer to have conversations with people who slandered you and smeared you, and and what was their response? I begged. 
for those conversations. And what was their response? Think, um, well, certain people in the community blackballed me. Yeah, that's exactly so, my response. They so said no. I was, yeah, they said no. They wouldn't take Correct. me on. So, I mean, like everybody left. Everybody who was my friend when I was left became my adversary, my enemy. Um, in, in some yep. cases, my hater. Um, because of this um, really, you know, I mean, it, it's really anti-skeptical to such a degree. I, I, I hate the yeah. fact yeah, that yeah. there's so much anti-skepticism and atheism right now, so much, it's I'm crazy. not going to, yeah. I'm going to shut down discussion. I'm going to shut down people talking. I'm going to, I'm going to blackball people who disagree with me. This is the opposite of skepticism right. and where the skeptics, okay, we're supposed to be doing the skepticism, but where, and they were just published a poll a little while ago and said that atheists are the worst when it comes to shouting down opponents. Oh, I saw they that. They can't speak. I that's, saw that. That's 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 shameful. That, that that that's 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 disgusting. That we have that we're the we're the ones that are supposed to be skeptical, and we're the worst at <laughs> being so skeptical. That's totally it, 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 totally it, true. It, totally and, and true. So it, it's it's disgusting that we are in this situation where I mean, think about that. This is my movement. This is the remains of my movement. Shutting down. This is something that I've never done ever is shy away from a discussion shy away because that's how i learn i know i'm right mostly because my arguments stand up to scrutiny and i can take down and i can uh argue against other people's positions i was on another podcast a little while ago against um a leftist who said uh donald trump uh pulled out of the paris accord because he hates the environment <laughs> right so this is somebody who had never, ever heard why Donald Trump pulled out of the Paris Accord. He made it up. OK. OK. And OK. So, so, he's, so there's no there's there's no knowledge of what the other side thinks. There's okay. just an opinion, a guess right. of what the other side thinks. So there's okay, no skepticism so, there. OK, so I, I want to make sure that there's just so much to cover in what you what you said. So the first thing you said was that poll, and somebody read is going to pull that poll up. Um, I I think I said that atheism has been prestigized. It's on my Twitter feed. Atheism has been uh, uh, prestigized by social justice, and and Peterson retweeted that. Mm -hmm. And it, it does, in a sense, go to something that I used to argue against bitterly, which was that atheism is a religion. But it does seem that at least contemporary modern new atheism has strongly religious. I mean, if you look at atheism as a non-stamp collector, then atheists should be no more or no less anything, right? I mean, you have conservative atheists, yeah. you have pro-choice atheists, you have you know what, what, whatever 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 it is. Um, here's the um, here's the the poll. Um, nope, it's not it. It's not it. Okay. Don't worry about it. We'll go back to it later. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to ask you was, <clears throat> and I think that this is very, very important. The last time I saw you in person was pre COVID and it was the sovereign nations con uh, conference with Jim, uh, James Lindsay and Helen in London. And mm -hmm. that was a, 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 I'm very happy that you, you went to that. Yeah, me too. Um, the people who, did this to you, your friends, is it, has it occurred to you or is it interesting to you? It's probably definitely occurred to you um, that they're all atheists. The people who have acted this way to you, toward you, I assume are all atheists. Are there, have there been any, any Christians who have done this to you? No, no, no. Christians and Muslims, they're fine. This has been all atheists. And I, I think, I think the answer, because I've been thinking about this a lot. I think the answer yeah. is that, a atheism is not a religion, and that's why it's a bad substitute for religion. Mm. And I think, you know, when I was involved, when I was president and executive director, it was my opinion that we had humanism. We had secular humanism to fill that void, to fill that void of mentality, that, um, that, that morality, that need for uh, morality from atheism, because we weren't going to get it from atheism. It's like you said, atheism is just non-stamp collector. OK, right. it doesn't mean anything. You can be atheist liberals. You can be atheist conservatives like Atheist for Liberty. Correct. Um, 
I so, wouldn't call them conservatives necessarily, but uh, I, would okay, call anyway, them, we, I would call them everything right of woke. They're everything right of woke. Uh, right. So I mean, I'm right. in it, and I'm I'm left of center. But what we've seen is that you know, um, Doctor Andy Thompson, Doctor Andy Thompson, 2009. Uh, he uh, used to be a fellow for Richard Dawkins, and he wrote a book called um, "Why We Believe in God." It's a little book. Yeah, and I read it. Andy's great. Andy, yeah, he's great. He's a wonderful guy. And he basically says that you know, he's an evolutionary biologist. And he basically says that the default setting for our brain is religious. I think he's a physician, isn't he? I believe Maybe he's an wrong. evolutionary biologist. Oh, okay. I may be I may wrong. Be wrong. I may be. Um, anyway. But anyways, he said that our default position for the brain is religious and that it comes from every single direction it's evolved in. And he also said that the circuitry in our brains that, uh, that connects the religion that, that works with religion is the same circuitry that works with social adhesion, social responsibility. And so if you think of that, okay, if you, if he's right, then we are, then atheism has always been fighting a tide. Okay. And, and would, and will always be fighting a tide because there's an evolutionary it's harder to be an atheist than it is to be religious. Okay. Um, so now we've got these people who are atheists, but they're also acting super religious and they're going along the lines of social responsibility. They're going along the lines of social adhesion. Um, they're doing everything religion without religious. So it looks like, yeah, they, it looks like, you know, yeah. <laughs> We're, we're, we're wired for it. I mean, th that supports the, and, uh, the the assertion that we're wired for this stuff. That's the substitution hypothesis. And yeah. before Gav or Dom, um, I mean, or, or um, uh, Reed pull that up, I do want to pull up the uh, poll you referenced so, so people can see it. Uh, Gav, can you please pull that up? I post it in the chat. Or not. Okay. So uh, the other thing is we have a thing. <laughs> oh, well. I can sing while we wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Um, pull, pull up the link I just posted in there. Okay. I don't know where everybody is. Feelings. So let, 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 there we go. Okay. Here it is. Here Look it is. Look at that. How this is our shame. Is to to <laughs> shout down a speaker to prevent them from speaking on campus. This is that our is shame. Mind blowing to me. Mind blowing. We are we are way worse at skepticism than the Christians and the Protestants and the Catholics and the and Mormons the Muslims. and the Muslims. Look at that. <laughs> this is our shame. A this is our shame right there. That's correct. It's not skepticism. It's atheists being the absolute worst at skepticism over everyone else. And look at this. There's a big jump between atheism and, and, and Jewish. You know, it just, there's a big jump there. This is... This is Andy Thompson. This is wokeism masquerading as religion. This is um, this is the result. Here's here's your 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 manifestation of the religion of wokeism taking a skeptical people and turning them non skeptical. Per Perestatizing, as I wrote in my first book, Perest it's perestatized it. atheism. Um, okay, so uh, if Gav, if you're there, could you please play the clip? of myself and Dawkins, and you mentioned it. And I want to talk to you about something I've wanted to talk to you about for quite a long time, because you're an insider of the substitution hypothesis. And do, do you want to take a shot at explaining the substitution hypothesis? Well, the substitution hypothesis that we're is, is basically the idea of uh, Christian, of whether or not we should use this wiring to foster Christianity versus wokeism in an attempt to, to, to stop wokeism. Um, uh, if, if there has to be a religion, uh, as Thompson I, I posited, if, if there has to be a religion, we should pick one that's not wokeism. Um, okay. Yeah. So is, yeah. Is, is the necessary default position as one ideology falls into ill repute and goes away, is it necessary that another one will fill the void? So let's take a look at this clip from Dawkins, and then I'm going to ask your opinion about this. All right. Uh, I, I don't know who came up with this. I might have come up with this. I don't know who came up with this, but the substitution hypothesis. Yes. So do you think that as one religion 
fades, another, like default is the belief state for humans. They just have to believe something. And, and as one, as the old religion fades, a new one has to come in. There's something in it, I think, and there's no doubt about it that we, have, we seem to have exchanged one form of superstitious religiosity for another. Yeah. And the analogy goes pretty deep. Um, but if you're right about the substitution hypothesis, then I'm rather inclined to give up. I mean, I, I don't know how to cope with that. Um, I used to think that the one thing that would make me want to die would be if I found myself in a world where I was surrounded by people who no longer believed in evidence and believed in something else other than evidence, somehow felt contempt for evidence. And I hope we're not approaching that now. I, I, I don't, I mean, none of my friends are like that. I certainly think that we're in that state with people in regard to conversations. And again, overwhelmingly, uh, I'd like to get the audience's thoughts on that about the substitution hypothesis. And then, um, it's if so you're, discouraging. Th ahead, there's Tom, a, hold on one second. There's a, there's a minty meter in the chat. So I'd like to see what, what the listeners think about this. Okay. So what is your take on the substitution hypothesis? It's scary. Okay. And the, the, the implications of it are really scary. Um, uh, uh, you know, my, my fear, of course, my fear would be, okay. I was an atheist leader. I did a lot for atheists. I, I have been very proud of my accomplishments. Did I do bad? Right. Did I cause harm? Because now we've got this, this seemingly, this, this very persuasive evidence that shows that, yeah, we're going to move from one to another. You know, and back in 2009, when I heard this idea, which wasn't called the substitution hypothesis, it was just called that the default position is 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 religious. Um, I didn't realize that by taking away that by fighting religion, I would just make way for something else, which I didn't realize it either. I mean, so so a wise man once said um, everybody does everything for exactly the same reason. You think it's a good idea at the time. Right? Do you know who Socrates, said that? Piece? Socrates said that in the in the in the Theotetus and elsewhere. Joe Michael Straczynski, Londo, Babylon Five. <laughs> oh, that's one of my that's favorite I shows. It. I know, I know. The, I someone who someone who works uh, w with us on our team is is friends with Peter Jurassic, that actor. Anyway, that's oh. But, but anyway, go ahead. Well, he's the one who said it. Yeah. Um, but anyways, um, I, I I am afraid that it's true. Okay, I'm afraid that it's true. I am afraid that the defeat, that, that the fight to fight ignorance, the fight to fight mythology um, is a never ending and possibly ultimately losing fight. And that is a hard pill to swallow because Dawkins is right. It's a sad world to be in when you don't have data, when you don't have respect for information. Yeah, when you don't um, when you don't value data, when you don't value evidence, when you won't have a conversation about data and evidence, when you I mean it is it is a it is exactly a like world when you talk to a Christian. It is exactly like when you talk to a Christian. It's exactly like when you talk to a, a, a very religious Muslim or a very religious Jew about the existence of God. They saw it's the exact same oh, words. I, 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 I was gonna say it's not actually like that. Um, it's like when you talk to certain presuppositionalists are certain Christians who are fundamental fundamentalists who maybe they, um, but even those people will have an apology or they'll have a defense of the faith. They'll, they'll speak gently and, and give a defense of what they believe. So I think there's this kind of, and, and let me just be, let me just put, <clears throat> be clear about this on a social level. It's always better to have people, participate in a more benign delusion. There's just no question about it. But I don't think that that means that we should encourage people to participate in delusions. All it means is that we would just step aside and let them hold or let them let their cognitions and let the mimetic spread of a less toxic ideology take root in the society. Because I, if, if the substitutional hypothesis is correct, I see no alternative to that. And well, Go ahead. Well, j just pull, pull up. I'm sorry. This, this is so much. I have so much to talk to you about. Pull up the quote about 
the someone's Twitter feed, the th- skeptical atheist or thinking atheist, whether about men having penises or whatever. Sorry, Dave, go ahead. That's okay. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should. I should have. Here's one. The amazing atheist. I don't know this guy, but the Bible is bullshit. The Quran is a lie. The Bhagavad Gita did not fall from the sky. And someone else said, but there's such a thing as a female penis. And the amazing atheist said, yep. Yeah. Because they're changing the words. They're changing the words to cloud the issue. They're clouding the issue because they don't want to study. They don't want to actually tell people, no, this is, this is the, uh, the coddling of the American mind on steroids. This is exactly what happened when you take away the ability to tell people, no, no, you're not actually a woman. No, you can't go into the women's showers. No, you can't compete against actual women because you're not an actual woman. You're completely allowed to live and do and marry and adopt as you see fit. But no, this is where we cross the line. We The, the left can't say that, okay? The left is those helicopter kids grown up and now having kids completely unable to say no to their kid, to their children's whims. In fact, they absolutely defend those whims. Um, and it's, yeah. it's the, the, I, the idea that, that we are transitioning children. I'm sorry to interrupt you. The idea that no, we're no. transitioning children is, is fucking killing me. Okay. As young as 12 are getting damaged by activist parents who want to use their kids. And we're, Double and, and the left is a, it's, it, it's, it's insane. It's insane that we are allowing our kids to be damaged like this. And, and and when we fight that, when we fight the insanity, we're called bigots. We're called assholes. We're called Nazis. turfs and transphobes. I am a pro-choice person. I have been left of center my entire life. I lobbied personally at the local, state, and federal level for trans rights. And I'm a tra- an anti-trans person because I don't think you should cut a child because I don't think a child can consent to permanent t- to permanent change. This makes me a bad person. It's insane what what the left has had, and, and and this is our atheism. This is what's happening in atheism now. And and when I say no, wait, let me explain. What do they do? They shut me down. They shout me out because they'd much rather have the very very easy path of hate because hate is so easy. Dismissal is so easy. And, and 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 skepticism is hard. Too fucking bad. Skepticism is hard. Do it anyways. I can't believe that poll. It's pissing me off so much. Yeah. It, it, yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. done. <laughs> I've been done years ago. I've Dude. been screwed. I've been screwed about this for years. No one's been listening. Like very few people. I've been listening. <laughs> I've been listening. And you were right. And you 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 called wokeism a religion first, okay? I saw that. Yeah, and you 2014. Were absolutely right. yeah. yeah, with Jim. And I I thought did. you were I thought you were wrong because I was in it at the time. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. were absolutely right, man. And now yeah. look at and now look at look at look at the the physiology of the brain that uses social the the same social path the same pathways used for social cohesion as it does for religion, okay? And religion is the default position, and religion yeah. is easier. And of course, religion is a part of ignorance. Ignorance is super easy. What comes with ignorance? Bigotry, racism, all that stuff all comes. This is what's happening to our left. As they, as they, as they drown out, as that poll shows, as they drown out people who dissent with them and never, ever listen to them, never, ever consider that they might be wrong or that the other side might be coming from a good place. They can't right. even go that far. Okay. Right. And, and and they're 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 trying to they call themselves skeptics, but they eschew skepticism. Right. They they hate skepticism, and it's it's like it's what you so said. disconcerting, Pete. These are my yeah, people. I know. I know. It, it, well, they're not my people. Uh, they you were know, my people. Yeah, they were your people. Uh, you know, one of one of the things you said is that they don't even know the other side of the argument. Like they don't no. know. They don't know because they don't engage in conversations. Like I don't think that they could steel man a position. I'm. I just did a, a no. great podcast with Chris Martinson, Martinson, and he asked me to steel man, and I just went through the list and I steel man every every position. Not like I'm a great guy or anything, but just because I read the stuff and I listen and I, I am. Um, I have done a deep dives in literature. But one of the things that I learned when I did the analysis, I listened to a truly crazy number of of uh, episodes and hours of NPR, and one of the things that I learned from that is. By and large, if they want to 
talk about some issue that the right believes. They'll have somebody on the left, the far left or the woke left, and they'll say, oh, well, well what do these people believe? Instead of asking someone who actually believes it. And yeah. we have clip after clip after clip on our NPR of doing of them doing exactly that. Now, and when they do bring the quote unquote conservative on, and again, I'm not a conservative. I know that pe people are constantly accusing me of being conservative. Because I, I don't know. I mean, Thomas Sewell defines conservative as, you know, you want to conserve the society. Okay, I guess if that's the case, that, that I don't want the whole society to go down in flames, then I guess that that makes me the most broad, broad conservative. But if atom, atom, um, atomistically, if you look at the discrete propositions in which I believe, they more or less, uh, are, are not entirely, but, but overwhelmingly comport with classical liberalism. Okay, so 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 we, we, we find ourselves in a very... I'm going to use your word, disconcerting cultural moment. We find ourselves in a moment, we haven't talked about this, but when there's large scale distrust of our institutions, we find ourselves in a, in people talking about the national divorce, not wanting to have, which is why, why I wrote the book. I'd have impossible conversations. Yeah. Uh, you know, great how book. we can start. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, great how book. we can start talking to each other again, Reed and I going around the world and we're doing street epistemology videos to, to, to show that one of the things we've found, by the way, in those videos is that so many people will not come and participate, but they'll come to either Reed or myself and they'll say, Oh, Hey, you know, I really want to do this, but uh, I don't want to be canceled. I don't want to be. And you mentioned the coddling of the American mind on steroids. I just, just in London, uh, talking to Greg Lukianoff about that. And he told me that the his new book with Ricky Schlott, who we're going to interview, he told me that the problem with cancellation is far deeper and more pervasive than people think. I've always thought that that's just a, a, a one manifestation of the ideology that people have a kind of idea fixate or their fixated idea on which they give a disproportional uh, um, amount of attention because it's more conspicuous than other insidious elements of the ideology and the apparatus that they use to enforce that ideology. Okay. So let I, we have a couple of clips. Uh, can you guys pull up a couple of clips? I want to sh show uh, Dave these clips and get his opinion on these cluster B. Here it is. This is from my buddy, Chris Rufo. For most of our history, significant personality disorders were treated as problems and largely relegated to the fringes of society. But in our emerging Cluster B society, the narcissist, the borderline, the hysteric, and the antisocial psychological types have been elevated into positions of power and celebrated by our institutions. The new status quo is an emerging leadership class that rules through emotional blackmail. Powerful institutions use the cover of various victim groups to impose their agenda on the rest of us. If we dissent, we're branded as hateful bigots. We're accused of lacking empathy. We're ritualistically banished. While these strategies are contemptible, they're also remarkably effective in controlling what we think, what we say, and how we act. And they've slowly transformed our institutions into what psychologist Andre Lobachevsky calls pathocracy, or rule by psychological dysfunction. This has become our new social order. If you look around, you'll start seeing it everywhere. The cluster B traits have been formalized and entrenched in our human resource departments, government policies, cultural institutions, and civil rights law. This is a recruiting video from the CIA that overtly valorizes the cluster B traits of narcissistic identity obsession self-righteousness, and need for affirmation. I am a cisgender millennial who's been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. In a cluster B society, psychological disorders become... Okay, Dave, you, you want to... I see your... I see, I see you have both disdain, disgust, frustration. And I have a generalized anxiety disorder too. Okay, I've also been gen, been been diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder, and, and and I had depression. I still have depression, and yeah. I'm, I'm an Ashkenazi Jew. You know, we're the most oppressed race on the planet. But yeah. I don't, I don't. But I actually rely on my ability to work and produce and actually get things done in order to survive. And, and the idea that we are reducing people to this now. The idea that that valorize, you know, valorize, that, we're, we're valorizing it. We're valorizing the reduction. You know, yeah. that person, that person on that TV was a hell of a lot more than a black woman with a general anxiety disorder. Yeah. She had she 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 was more than that. 
and and we're reducing our entire population to that. And the entire the, the idea that we are using, I mean, that's a very scary video. Okay, it's it, the idea that we are um, that we have this. Well, it, it is systemic racism. Okay, it is a systemic because wokeism is racism incarnate. Is it well, wokeism is very ignorant, and ignorant begins begets bigotry, begets racism. So there's a lot of brand new actual real systemic racism against whites and Ashkenazi Asians. Jews and Asians. Asians. And, yeah. And, and and it's 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 systemic and it's real. And you know that it's real because you can point to the policies and fix it and it would reduce. That's how you know that systemic racism is actually real. Okay. And you know, we so, are watching our country descend into this racial place, this racist 100, place. A hundred percent. And and wait until you read the literature. I don't know if you I, I've been reading the literature on madness. Um, wait until you see the attempts to normalize madness that are coming down the literature. It's actually actually the word that they that they use. Just read a, an article about it two nights ago that that uh, Jim said because sent me. you can't say no. You can't say you're mad. You can't say you're crazy. You can't say sit down. You need to relax anymore. That's assault. You can't say you're wrong at all. You know, many times when I was a kid, you and I are the same age. And many times when I was a, when I was young, I mean, you still not have many the, times, you still have your hair color, which is impressive as, as hell. That's right, Ashkenazi Jew, baby, Ashkenazi yeah, Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not we're not the superior race, but we are the best looking race, <laughs> you know, objectively speaking. Um, but uh, shit, what was I saying? Shit, what was I saying? I don't know, I got caught up in your hair, it's, it's, <laughs> so, so I'd love to have that hair color. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, good. It make, makes you look like 10 years younger. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but what I said, what I was saying was that it used to be when I was a kid, uh, when I was a teenager, I would do stupid shit. And yeah. one of my friends would take me aside yeah. and say, what are you doing? You're, you're going too far. You're doing the wrong thing. You right. need to calm down and take a step back. That never happens anymore. That's considered assault. That's considered aggression. So nobody is getting their shit checked. And so what we do instead is we say, oh, it's okay to be crazy. It's okay to be morbidly obese. It's okay to, to hoard. It's okay. You know, everything is great. You're it's special a micro just the way you are. Right. No, you're, you're every, not. You're not every, special. <laughs> Get up and work. Everybody's special and accusing anybody of anything else is a microaggression. <clears throat> but even I, if you... Even if you did what you did, it there were just certain things that would have been utterly unthinkable. Like it would have been unthinkable to, to go to for, for me to walk in a woman's room. Like just un I, utterly unthinkable. Unthinkable. No, I'm it, a woman it, it now. It wouldn't even. It, it just. It, and it, it, it wouldn't. So. It wouldn't even be in the milieu. Because women only spaces are real, but you can't tell a trans man no you can't tell a trans woman no if a trans woman says i'm a real actual literal female and i need to be treated as a literal a woman female, a woman yeah yeah a woman yeah a female i'm saying female not just woman female if a if a if a if a male trans if a male if a trans woman demands to be called female we call them female because we can't say no you're not and, and, yeah. and this is the hardest thing to see. And it goes back to Luke and book. You can't say no to people. Right. It's the cluster B personality. By the way, I have a wonderful collaborative project I've been working with Michael Schellenberger on in which we, I don't want to say too much because it, it's not out yet, but we map woke characteristics onto DSM cluster B personality disorders. And that should be coming out this month. Okay. I have That's a couple of... Uh, uh, Western civilization and uh, Judeo-Christian values. I have I have another um, um, a clip that I want to play you uh, read. Pull up that that uh, Prager clip. Number seven: Please. Man is not basically good. Christians speak of original sin in referring to man's nature. Jews cite what God said in Genesis: "The will of man's heart is evil from his youth." Both beliefs are diametrically opposed to the naive modern belief that man is basically good, and they lead to the same conclusion. We need God-based rules to keep us from our natural inclinations. Number eight, therefore, our natural inclinations are a very poor moral guide. As religious Jews and Christians put it, don't follow your heart. A lot of terrible things have been done and are being done now by people thinking that.
Okay, Dave. Uh, kind of the substitution hypothesis, kind of... But just comment on that, please. You you had a, a a guest on. I think her name was uh, Doctor Lee, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. who, who moved from wokeism to Christianity. And in that, oh, no, 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 that was Carrie Smith. Carrie Smith, um, and uh, she, um, you know, at the end of that video, you talked about. Well, do you actually believe this is true? And she clearly did not. Okay, and what she said, in my opinion, I don't want to say what I read in mind, but in my opinion. What she said was, no, I don't believe it, but it helps me. But I, I get this from this. You know, that's what I got from that conversation. And that's what Prager is talking about here. It's not talking about whether or not religion is true. He's talking about whether or not we need rules. It, it, it reminds me of that scene from Avengers when Loki is talking to the crowd. When he comes to Earth, and he talks to the crowd and he says, and he makes them all get on their knees. And he says, look, this is this is where you belong. You are subservient people. It's the same thing. Um, I, I don't see, I, I think man is inherently good, okay? But the problem is that there's just so, we're just very, very easy to corrupt and very, very easy to mislead. And I, I think the brain is a stupid thing. Um, we have cognitive dissonance up the wazoo. We, 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 we see faces in the clouds and we but hear- But not clouds and faces, right? Evolutionary Andy Thompson. Reasons. Andy Thompson. Very right. good. Right. That's right. Uh, it's, um, it's a scary thing to think that Prager might be right on this one point. Not that God is real. Not that God is real. Nobody's talking about God is real in this example. We're talking about whether or not it's necessary, whether or not we need God-based rules. And the question is valid. It's the a totally it's a, it's a totally legitimate question. I'm going to I'm going to uh, plug the claims. Uh, we asked people what they think about uh, humans ba basically being good. Humans need God based rules to keep us from our natural inclinations. I, I, I think so. So what happens when. OK, so let, let me phrase it th this way. Wokists think they're doing good. OK, wokists yeah. think they're doing good. Good by Go mutilating the genitals of children because we should yes. believe all children. They don't think they're doing bad. They don't right. think they're doing no, bad. Right. That's that's the Londo quote and and the Socrates quotation. So yeah. uh the Londo qu quotation. So okay, so we we have a situation now in which the rules the the Judeo-Christian ethics by which we've structured our societies and you and I played a role in this. Uh th those those rules or those values have fallen not not wholesale i mean certainly the embedded structures of our institutions that that buttress and hold up the society uh, th those are still normative by and large but we we have our in large scale ideological capture and corruption of our institutions corruption of our peer reviewed literature wholesale i would say almost wholesale corruption of the peer reviewed literature almost yeah. whole scale, scale corruption of of our institutions, our academic institutions, our engines of knowledge production have been compromised. It's 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 a fucking catastrophe. Yeah. Um, and 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 I I do have a buddy of mine is not on social media. He's not in any of this stuff, and he doesn't participate in the culture war. And when I hear this stuff from him, when he starts talking about it, like, you know, uh, his experiences this with his son is in in the military. Uh, it, it's just it's utterly utterly fascinating to me. To, to listen to his conception of this, although he does watch YouTube and get some of his information there. But okay. So I want to, I, I want to talk to you about a few things like, what do we do about this? How do we engage this? But, but I think, I think we have another clip uh, possible. Let's play that other clip read. Oh, and then we have super chats. If you want to super chat and ask Dave or I a question, we must recognize Dave or me a question. I was going to think about that. Yeah. Dave me a me. question. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just put that in there. It's so much easier when you're right than when you speak. We uh, must we recognize that Christian nationalism is just another totalitarian movement that is being used to balkanize and disrupt religious organizations. Some of the figures involved in the movement are frankly useful idiots. Other figures within the movement are ideologues who are knowingly causing this fracturing within the church and our nation. Second, we must recognize that Christian nationalism functions like the other totalitarian groups we've discussed at this conference. The current expressions of it are more conservative forms of it, 
but they operate with the same method and end goals. But they will tell you it is all to bring about the kingdom of God and the lordship of Christ, which is nothing more than religious propaganda. Third, pastors need to be aware of this movement and reject it within their churches. You want to split your church? This is something worse than the color of the carpet. This is something that will fundamentally rip your church apart. Fourth, we must support the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion, lest we lose it. This means we must return to constitutional principles and the classical liberal idea of a free society. And finally, churches must be committed to defending the gospel in our present day and culture, but it must also fight for a society that allows for the freedom of religion that is being attacked from both inside the church and outside. Okay. And I have more I have more in common with that Christian apologist by far than I do with woke atheists. What what where where's the where where can we disagree with that stuff? Why why am I on the side of religious preachers? Okay? I I should not be on this guy's side, okay? I should not be agreeing with just about every word of that slide. I should be disagreeing with every word that a preacher puts up, but I'm not. I'm agreeing because the world has turned upside down and now the bedfellows have completely shifted. It's starting with that sovereign nations place with that sovereign nations uh, event that I attended with you, Peter. Yeah. And, and now we've got this, these, this brand new world where the religious right are the sensible ones. And, and, you know, there was nothing in there about converting people. There was nothing in there about, but, and, and he was very right about, it is going to split churches. Yeah. And it is going to so, split churches. So, I believe in religious liberty and religious freedom. And if somebody is <clears throat> Christian and they want to practice their religion, or someone is a Muslim and they want to practice their religion in the same way that I don't want to practice any religion. And so I don't want to have the government compel me to go to church or mosque or synagogue or, or, or temple or, or what have you. And so we have a great realignment. We have a culture war 2.0 in which many in, in which woke atheists and woke Christians have more in common than I have than anti-woke atheists. Or even that is such a limiting frame. It's just not a people who believe in people who are not authoritarian. I am not an authoritarian uh, and, and people who believe in cognitive Liberty. If someone wants to believe somebody walked on water, you know, knock yourself out. And I also believe that Christians and religious people should have the right to, you know, get on a, a literal soapbox or, or, or stand and try to convert a, a people in the same way that I have the right that I wrote about in my first book to question those claims, to challenge those claims, to engage in debate, civil civil discourse and dialogue. And that's the kind of society that, that we ought to be moving toward. But instead, we have, there's no polite way to say it, we have maniacs. We, we have people and again, it goes back to the university system. It's fed in by by uh, algorithms on social media, and it's made worse by big tech. We're moving away from the kinds of societies that offer people the opportunity to live lives the way they want to live, to yeah. make choices, to <clears throat> worship or not worship the way they see fit. And instead, we're lapsing in, into a kind of militant dogmatism that's captured our institutions. And so when I hear things like that, I think, wow, I this is this guy is absolutely spot on. Now, I don't believe any of the metaphysical stuff he believes, but when it comes to opposing Christian nationalism or any kind of nationalism for, for that matter, and allowing people to live lives of that that they want to live, there's just no question that's it's that's the right the, thing to do. That's American, that's the right thing to do. But what do we do if if we're losing that? We have to fight. Well, we are losing it. Yeah, we're we're losing yeah. it. And we're losing it fast, and it will exacerbate with current. You know, uh, I just was reading Balaji stuff about uh, debt, ability to pay debt back, etc. I think it will expedite with uh, economic decline, inflation, it, it, uh, unemployment. Yeah, rates, it's it's a real decline. It's a real decline. I mean, we're seeing the decay of the, of America on, on so many several fronts. Yeah, morally, in real time, in real, in real time, time. We're watching it happen. Um, I am uh, not giving up. Okay, I'm not um, giving up either. I'm not giving up. Uh, not giving we are definitely. We have definitely lost a lot of ground uh, from an atheist perspective. We lost a lot of separation of church and state ground from a moral perspective. From a skeptical perspective, we've lost. You know, you you saw that. You saw that chart. Um, 
we need to fight harder. And uh, I mean, I'm not going down without a fight. I'm not walking. I'm not walking into the night. Okay. Um, I am committed to my ideals and my principles. And those principles are, are enlightenment principles. And 100%. the idea that, and the idea that, that, that objective reality exists, cultures can criticize other cultures. People can criticize other people and not be racist and not be uh, objective and actually be trying to help. In fact, they have to, who are they not to? They have to, who, who, you're right. Who are they we have not the moral, to? we have the moral responsibility to do this. Okay. But by, we have the by moral what, responsibility right. to fight this fight. But, but by what, on what ground could they not do that? Because it couldn't be, as I've said repeatedly, you, you can't be both an egalitarian and a relativist. And so we have a problem. We, we have a civilization wide problem. And, you know, it's the funny thing, God, Dave, it's just like every, everything. It's like every institution. It's like SPLC, AC, ACLU. I mean, nature, scientific American. It's, it's all, you know, they threw our buddy Shermer out of there and they, they put in some woke person. Scientific American is like one of the worst. Now it's infecting nature. You know, Jerry Coyne has written about this. This is a civilization. Yeah, this is a civilization th threatening event. This is not hyperbole. I'm not, the, I mean, you can just look at, at the metrics of the data. Trust in institutions are at historic lows. We know that. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Yeah. Right. The, the only people people trust, the citizens trust are their own doctors. The, the, I think the, the last um, piece I read about that, that's the highest uh, trust. They, they don't, p people, so, so, okay. So, so we have so many things so many, many problems, but I agree with you. I'm not giving up. I'm fighting. I'm fighting full, full steam. I will it's tell a moral you. moral imperative. It's a moral imperative. It's a moral imperative. I will tell you, I feel um, discouraged when I think about, and I'm just being very candid with you, a Trump-Biden re-election. What the fuck? Like, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? Like, yeah. in the whole country, these are the two guys you got. we have. It's an embarrassment. It's an it's an embarrassment. It is, and 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 I don't think that will bode well. And then you have, you know, I'm not going to name his name, but then you have, you know, prominent leftists calling for Biden to step down, and you have, I, I just, I, I, it's a mess either way. It's a mess either it's way. An, it's I, a I just would like way. to see virtue, and then you know, people, I, you know, I, I'm against any kind of dynasty for this country. I, you know, I hope Michelle Obama does not run. Oh jeez, um, I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just posted. Okay, I think we have a couple more clips. You have a couple more clips, Reed. Feelings, okay, nothing more any, than we don't have <laughs> no more clips. Any, yeah, we don't have any more clips. I thought I thought we had clips, but we do have some Substack questions. Okay, let me read you these questions that people uh, people want. Uh, Abraham H. Silverman recently said, quote, scaring your children with tales of hell and eternal damnation, which you know to be false, to deter them from becoming woke is nothing short of child abuse. His statement right. causes many questions to come to mind. I'd like him to clarify his position a little more, please. And then I may have, I have another one for you. Okay, so th this, this is about whether or not, okay, so l let's say you're, you're a parent, you've got a kid, and the question is, whether or not you're going to bring this kid to church as a defense mechanism of that against that kid being woke. And I find that to be child abuse. I find it to be child abuse because it is deliberately misleading your child. It is deliberately putting them into uh, indoctrinating them into something which you know is false, you know is harmful, and uh, you know could damage their entire psyche and it has damaged people's entire psyches. If your kid finds out that you lied, your kid will never forgive you because you lied to them. And I would never forgive my parents if they did that to me. So uh, yes, scaring your children, you know, in, in telling them about hell to stop them from doing something that you don't believe it. If I mean, if you're a Christian, that's one thing, but if you yeah, know it's right, false, right. Right. Uh, you're not acting morally. You're not acting ethically. You're damaging your children. Find another way. Yeah. And there's a difference between stepping out of the way in terms of a social battle to let people believe 
more benign delusions or let people have more de benign delusions and actively pushing them into delusion. Yes. Yes. And, right. That's and child so, abuse. It's child right. abuse. That, Dawkins said that I did an event with him a few years ago and uh, he said that he, he we, we spoke, we had a conversation about whether that was child abuse and I agree. Okay. So um, he has another question, Abraham H. <clears throat> if a child is raised as a Christian and it is determined that one of the parents is not a believer, should the child be taken from an abusive home or does the child need to be raised Christian specifically to combat woke ideology? I don't think it's it the to qualify as abuse. Our, our parents I, of, yeah, go ahead. I, I don't think it's the state's position to, to take away a child from a parent unless it's super, super grotesque. Okay. Um, I, I think that, um, I mean, we're not in a position to determine if a, if a, if a parent's beliefs are, are real or not. Okay. We're not in the position to say, okay, you're lying about right. this. Um, right. my, uh, that, that's not a place where the statement was supposed to go. I'm just saying that if that, that on an individual level, if you lie to your kid and scare the shit out of them because and make them believe in hell and demons and, and eternal damnation so they don't go woke. That's a horrible thing to do to a child. Should uh, right. a, a kid be taken away from a parent for doing that? I don't think so. But it's yeah, a I bad thing to do. I, cer I certainly do not think so. I certainly do not yeah. think so. Yeah, but it's a bad thing to do with kids, so don't do it. Yeah. Um uh, okay, so I think those are all our subset questions. Yeah, if you have super chat, let let Dave know. Um, I, I want to talk about your matching donation. Could you talk about that for a second? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'm I'm not going down without a fight. Um, Atheist for Liberty is uh, uh, an organization. It's the only atheist organization left in the country that's not woke. It is being run by this guy named Thomas Sheedy, who's 24 Correct. years old. He's a great guy. And He's a great guy, super smart, super, super intelligent, very, very competent at running an organization. And I stand firmly behind this because, like I said, I'm not going down without a fight. And Atheist for Liberty is the only atheist organization that's actually fighting for the separation of church and state. They're the yeah, only let, me, let, let, let me just throw this out. It's just this question. Mm -hmm. Isn't Atheist for Liberty in large part fighting for what that guy, that Christian preacher was saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy because we live in bizarro world. We live in crazy bizarro world now, Pete. That's what that's what's going on. So yeah, uh, we can get. Uh, it's just not. I feel like I'm dreaming. I feel like this is a bad dream. Watching the country go down the tubes uh, from so many different angles, from so many different on a moral, on an ethical, on an on educational, on information. Yeah. News, it's politics, it's going down. And, and it's heartbreaking. I, I, I do okay. have a little bit of good news that enrollments in universities are down. So people are less, fewer people are becoming indoctrinated into an ideology. <clears throat> hey, oh, we have a good. poll. We have a but we I want. A, I want to keep, go ahead, but I want to keep talking about that donor match. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. But, the donor match. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So, go ahead. That's okay. So, but so, um, Things have been uh, going pretty well for me in the last year. And what I decided to do uh, was a donor match. I, I decided to um, to become the donor. I used to be a, a donor solicitor, and now I'm a donor, and that feels good. Uh, but I am matching, for the rest of the year, I am matching donations to Atheists for Liberty. It's a nonprofit, 501c3. Uh, it's September 20th now. Everybody's thinking about end-of-year donations. If you donate to Atheists for Liberty before the end of the year, I will double your donation out of my pocket because I believe that strongly in this organization and the and and what they're doing. So I, I just wanted to say that, Pete, because I, I feel so strongly about this um, that I'm putting my own money behind it. And uh, I couldn't like like this this thing that we have in front of the best 10k investment I've ever spent. Uh, it feels really good to uh, donate this money, and I hope everybody just will just go to atheistforliberty.org. Um, and donate, and I will match your donations. So thanks for Thank making you. that. Let me bring Thank you for doing that. We should reach out to that preacher and have him donate too. It seems right up his alley. You know, um, we okay. It's bizarro so we, world. <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarro world. Okay, so we got a new poll going. Here's the poll. 
Would you rather have your child be a moderate Christian or a woke atheist? Would you rather Ooh. have your child be a moderate Christian? Okay, Dave, I am going to ask you the hardest question. Would you rather have your child be a moderate Christian? Because I can easily answer that question. You're thinking, Dave's thinking about it. I mean, my child is a woke atheist and they won't speak to me. Okay, okay so, so are you going to answer the question directly? You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. I, I, I honestly, no, I, I'm, I'm not going to cop out of this. I'm actually thinking about what I would, what I would prefer. I mean, so think it through aloud so with us. Think it I, I would think aloud. it through. Well, okay, so Christian is a myth. Wokeism is a myth. Uh, would I rather have my kid? It, so moderate Christian. So just to be and clear, that's a disgusting thing to be. That's a disgusting <laughs> place to be. That's a disgusting place to be. We live in a bizarre world. It's crazy. And you just made me say that. It's wrong. It's true, though. If my daughter was a was a moderate Christian, she'd be she'd be cool, right? Right? They'd be cool, and they could do whatever they want. Wokeism is is divisive. Wokeism is ignorant. Wokeism is wrong. So is Christianity, but Christianity is not nearly as divisive or ignorant, especially when it's moderate. So, yeah. and it has a it has a compassion element. But I would is, not. Yeah. Yes. But I would not raise my child with that intention. No, for sure, for sure. But if you were given your choice, so I'll, I'll, if you were given a choice, you'd rather have a moderate Christian than a than a woke atheist. So, I have a I have a rule as I have a rule <laughs> as Reed will Bizarro tell you. Bizarro fucking world, man. Bizarro right. fucking world. Right. Um. Correct. My rule is that I would never ask someone a question unless I were willing to subject myself to the same question. And I think that that's a very good, good rule that, that um, it's not even a rule of thumb. It's just a rule. So I'm going to answer that question. There's absolutely no question in my mind whatsoever that I would rather have my child be a moderate Christian, but I would like you, I would not raise my child to be a moderate Christian. I, I, raise them with the tools of skepticism and critical thinking and how to evaluate evidence and Bayesian probabilities and and uh, you know how to spot fallacies how to be less wrong more often how to understand cognitive biases etc and then they can come to their own conclusions but but by virtually any metric if not any every metric that my relationship with them would be better and their internal prospering and and flourishing would be better and be better off for the society um and I have I have many friends who are I've just become um, close friends with Winston Marshall. I have many friends, uh, for Mumford and Son. He's a pretty hardcore Christian, and he, he's become a close friend of mine. And um, I enjoy our our spirited conversations. He's always up to talk to me. He's always up to. I lived in his basement for a month, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and we're going to hang out uh, um, in London again. And I have nothing but respect for him and his ability and willingness to engage me and you know like he treats everybody with dignity and compassion and decency and it, it's not saying that atheists don't do that or can't do that and i know many athe many of my very close friends are atheists who do that i also have had similar experiences to you when the people who have come at me and Shermer told me this a while ago the people who have come at me without question most in the most nasty ways have have universally been atheists universally universally i mean they, i don't there's i'm no not going to mention an atheism there's no compassion in atheism there's no uh compassion in wokeism there's no mercy forgiveness redemption in wokeism atheism is not a religion it's not a substitute for religion and this is what we've learned atheism is not a substitute for religion and wokeism is that's the hard lesson that's the hard lesson do you, have any, do, you, do, you, do you have any regrets at, at, at shaking the tree a little bit, the tree of faith, the tree of belief? No, I did the right thing. I did what I thought was the right thing to do all the time. And I, I didn't sacrifice. I, I, I didn't sell out. Do I regret helping to convert people out of Christianity? No. Christianity is a lie. Um. And then, like you said, they made their own decisions after that. 
and I'm sad that they made that people made decisions and, and have joined this this cult. I am encouraged in that I do think it is going to. I, I think the tipping point is approaching. I feel like people are getting really fed up with this. I feel like the writer's strike and the, 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 the Hollywood strike is going to help. And I feel like as these um, young adults go into the work world and are faced with the realities that you do, in fact, get told, no, you do, in fact, fail, um, that there is going to be, I mean, I would like to say a growing up, I would fantasize to say a mm. backlash. Mm. Um, and I would even more fantasize to say a reckoning. But I feel mm. like uh, there's a whole bunch of children. We are being, uh, the, the amount of children being transitioned is absurd, but we're, we don't actually know that. We don't have that data. Yeah, the uh, that data is being hit. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, so once we find out what that data is, once those people come out with their damages, um, it's going to be, I, I think there's going to be a reckoning and, and I think I'm going to be there to fight. I think you're going to be there to fight. I think atheists for Liberty will be there to fight for the resurgence of, of America after this, this battle happens. Yeah. So that was my next question. W what are you fighting now? Lies, immorality. I, I, I've taken a, a humanistic turn in my life. Okay. Mm. Um, uh, humanism is important to me. It's always been my driving force. I've never really spoken about it, but it's always been, you know, uh, I, I believe that uh, we have a pseudo objective good in the reduction of suffering. Every object, every living being flees from suffering on the planet. Uh, no, it's not really objective good, but it is as close as we get. And the object, the existence of that um, mandates a morality around it. OK, and that that's my position. It's kind of a firebrand humanism type of thing situation. So if 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 the objective good exists, we must follow it to be good. And when you look at that, when you look at the humanism at humanism from that perspective, you can build a morality around the reduction of suffering that will include honesty, that will include integrity, that will include skepticism. And you can all bring it back to the root of reducing suffering. And that is something that um, I believe that I, I I'm, that's what I'm fighting. I, I'm fighting suffering. I think and that's, uh, I think, I think that's, that's lovely on many kinds. It's, there's a line of literature about negative utilitarianism and Richard Rorty has a good a book, uh, contingency, irony, and solidarity. There's been some really good philosophical, interesting literature on that. Um, I, I think that that is a noble goal. I think that that aligns with, you know, medical institutions and the way that we conceive of those and the amelioration of suffering. I, 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 I laud you in that fight and I laud you in the, in the, in the persistent fight for lies. And I'm, I'm genuinely sorry that this, this has happened to you. Some of this stuff was, some of it was inevitable when you fight a culture war and you participate in high levels like you do. And much of that, let's be blunt with each other, is so painful. It's the sting is so deep when you're so raw, when it's people you care about and who you thought cared about you. And they they turn to just side with the people who had more power. And they didn't do, either they didn't do what they think that they thought was true, but the quality of your interactions now is so much higher than it was before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I went down. So it was, so, it was the most painful experience of my life by far. I mean, yeah, I've lost sure. both my parents and I know you have too. And right. getting canceled was, was far more painful than losing them. Um, but, and, and I went into, you know, a really, I, I won't get into too much detail here, but I went to a really bad depression for a couple of years. Um, and, I'm I'm coming out of it now. I'm married again to the wonderful Good. Christine Shelska. Yeah, uh, I went I, to, I went to your virtual wedding for a little bit. Yep, yeah, yeah, I know, and thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'm like I said, I'm I'm doing financially well now, so I have I am recovering from that. And I hope you know I I hope a lot of things happen to a lot of people, but I don't wish cancellation on anyone. What I went through was not okay. Uh, it was not okay. It was not a life experience that, um, that I would want for anybody. I wouldn't want that for my enemies. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I, think, I, I would but, want it for the people who lied. Yeah. I would want it for the people who lied, but I wouldn't want that for anybody else. In, in many senses, these individuals who have fallen to the ideology are really epistemic victims. And, and I know, I know, I know that, you know, being a victim, I talked about this as a badge of honor in today's culture, but they really, I, I agree with what you said before from the, the Londo quote, one of my favorite, favorite characters, Londo and, and, and John Crichton and, Card, etc. But uh, and you're 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 a sci-fi guy too, and you were in the 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 one of the the Trek things uh, uh, films. I have a on. speaking role in Trekkies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, so, oh my God, now I start thinking about science fiction, and and, and it's all downhill. Science fiction, jujitsu, the two things that that uh, <laughs> that my my two my two other hobbies. Um, okay, so. Anything else you, you want to talk about? Anything else you want to throw out or anything I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? No, I mean, I, I think the thing that I wanted to get through to get out from this, from this interest, from this interview, from this yeah. discussion is that the, the world is really, or I should say the United States and Canada is really in a challenging position. We see challenges from every, every aspect. And I don't know if we're going to win. Okay. I, I, I don't know if the good guys are going to win this one, but I'm not going to stop fighting. I am going to claw and scratch all the way down that hole. And, um, and that's because this is the fight for the reduction of suffering. There are children being mutilated in the United States of America right now. Okay. There are um, families being split over lies right now. The, the half of the atheist movement, can't do any skepticism because I can't hear the other side I'd speaking. We have far, far more than half, I'd, I'd say, but yeah. It, 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 and, and, and all I'm going to say about this is that, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with Dawkins. It is very intimidating and it's very sad and I don't like it, but I have to keep fighting because we have a moral obligation to keep doing this. We have a moral obligation because I mean, Things have been down before the chips are down, but we should, we could still do this maybe. And I'm not going to, we're not going to find out if we bail. I'm right there so with you. I, I, I'm fighting until the end. I'm right there with you. Thanks for having the conversation, Dave. Don't hang up yet. We're going to, we're going to uh, upload the video. Thanks everybody for watching. And thanks Dave. I appreciate your friendship and I appreciate the work you do. Thanks. Man. I appreciate you back, Peter. Take care. Right on. Thank you for watching. Everything we do is under the umbrella of the national progress Alliance nationalprogressalliance.org. It's a nonprofit, independent 501c3. Your generous donations keep us going and keep fueling content like this. So please help us out, make a donation. We very much appreciate it. Thank you.